And as promised uh, in this week's class, uh, since we ran out of time, uh, I want to go ahead and cover um, the loan amortization table and how to create uh, and work with a, a loan amortization table. We're going to be uh, taking a look at uh, a, a car payment. Um, we're going to look at what the, the annual interest rate is, uh, the number of, of payments, the terms, uh, and we're going to create an amortization table that basically shows as you make payments how much of that goes towards interest, how much of that goes towards principal, and then after each payment what your ending balance is. And then we're also going to look at some uh, some cumulative interest and principal computations. Uh, so what I've created here is a, uh, a workbook or worksheet here. We're looking at a $50,000 vehicle with a 4.5 APR with a start date of March 1st for the first payment. Uh, the terms of the, of the loan are six years, uh, 12 payments per year. So based off of uh, that, we have a calculation, which is we use the payment function. We're looking at the principal. Uh, we're, we're looking at the APR um, divided by the number of payments. Uh, so that gives us our per periodic rate. Um, we have our our value here for the uh, for the number of uh, loan uh, number of payments. So again, six times twelve is going to give us seventy two here. Um, and then we have the the actual principal. I did include the negative sign here with the principal, so it gives us a positive uh, payment information. You can put that at the uh, in between the equal sign and the payment. Uh, either way will work. Uh, but essentially, this gives us what our monthly payment is going to be for this vehicle. So $793.70, again, scheduled 72 payments with our periodic rate being computed based off of those terms. So if we look at our, our table here, um, I've got this structure to go all the way down for the entire term of the, of the loan. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to determine the calculations based off of um, each payment. So first thing I want to do is, is set up the dates. I've got the number of payments here, so we're going to use that e-date function uh, that we learned in class. We're going to reference the, the, the date above us, so B13, and again, one month out from that date. We hit enter, and again, it gives us, uh, I pre-formatted pre the information, but uh, let's go ahead and change that date format just a little bit. Um, and give it a, a short date format. So now we have our payment structure set up for the first of every month. And again, if you click on the autofill feature and run that down the entire length, it will save you some time of having to type in each month. So that preformats our, our due date. Uh, the first row or the first payment I've got calculated here. So we've got $50,000, our regular payment based off the information here. Our interest payment, again, is going to be, uh, is going to reference the beginning balance. It's going to basically, uh, and I have that set up to run a calculation of the APR divided by the number of payments, so 4.5% of uh, divided by 12. We'll multiply that times the beginning balance, and that gives us the interest. For uh, for this the number the amount of interest that's going uh, of this payment towards the the balance there. Uh, once you have that information calculated, your principal then is simply the payment that you make minus that interest payment gives you your ending balance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to carry that ending balance over to the next line as the beginning balance for the second month payment. So H13, and that carries over. Um, and so what you can do here is, again, we have our, our computation. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply this 793.70 um, over the course of the entire duration of the loan. So we autofill that. So 
So we're going to carry that down all the way through the duration of the payment. You can, again, carry your, your interest calculation all the way down. You'll notice that initially, those values are left blank, or there's, there's no data appearing in here. And that's primarily because we don't have a beginning balance in here yet. Um, again, for your principal payment, carry that all the way down. And again, you'll see that initially it's going to have the entire amount, um, but that will be adjusted once we work through our beginning balance here, our end balance and beginning balance. So as we as we apply this down, and again, you just apply the formulas all the way down, drag them down. And until we get that applied across the board for each payment, each ending balance, or each column here, um, you'll notice that those values will then start to repopulate them. So as we fill in our amortization table in terms of our payment structure, we're noticing that uh, as we make payments, there's a the amount of, of, uh, of the payment that goes toward interest decreases with every subsequent pay, uh, payment and your principal actually increases the amount going off the, the principal uh, coming uh, getting applied to the principal on the loan it increases as you make payments um, so again it goes through and it does this calculation all the way down until you get to uh, your last your last payment um, and that basically creates the amortization table. Um, however, there's a couple of additional calculations to look at as well. We have over here off to the, to the right, we have cumulative interest and cumulative print principal. And what this does is based off of the structure of the loan, it calculates um, cumulatively based on what payments you're on um, and uh, the, the terms of the loan. It, it, it computes uh, and aggregates the, uh, the the cumulative interest on the loan. So let's take a look at this. We have a function called cumipmt, and that is the cumulative uh, interest payment. IPMT is for interest payment. We're looking at the terms of the loan, or the, the structure of the, of the function to include the terms of the loan. So we're looking at the periodic rate, which is 0 .0, I'm sorry, 0 0.375%. We're looking at the scheduled number of payments, so 72. Look at the present value. Again, that present value is going to be based off of the $50,000 for the vehicle. And then we're looking at the start period and the end period. So for this particular row here, we're looking at payment number one, start payment number one, uh, end payment of, uh, again, payment number one. So we're looking strictly at the confines of that particular payment. And then the type is a reference to whether it is the beginning or the end of that pay period. And we're going to be looking at it from the end of the pay period uh, for, for this particular calculation. If you take that zero out and you put that zero back in, um, it will go ahead and indicate, uh, base the calculation off of that. So once we structure our cumulative interest payment, we hit enter. And you should notice that it, for the first line here, it uh, matches the initial interest payment of 187.50. Uh, and again, what you can simply do is do the through the autofill functionality, uh, start applying that formula down throughout the rest of your amortization table. Uh, and what you can, how you can double check your work is to to see that the cumulative interest is calculated correctly. Select the first two uh, interest payments. You'll notice the sum down here at the bottom in your status bar. You can, can you can compare that to what's in the cumulative interest value uh, for that second row, uh, just to double check and make sure that the, that the computation is is correct. Uh, and again, apply that all the way down. 
and then we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back up and we're going to look at what the cumulative principal payment is and it's a very sa same structure in terms of the syntax for the cumulative interest payment uh, the only difference is is the function call is different we have cumulative principal which again takes into account the periodic rate of 0.375 percent it looks at the scheduled number of payments we're looking at uh, the present value of the loan, which is $50,000. And we're also looking at the start uh, and end period of the payment, uh, of the calculation of the payment, and then the type. Again, we're looking at the end of the payment period. So this is going to calculate cumulative principal. And again, you apply that across the board or apply that down the the, uh, the sheet and what you'll find is your cumulative interest or your cumulative principal payment will equal the cost of, of the actual loan your interest payment if you come over here to our interest you can do a sum and you can select the range all the interest values for your computation Make sure that you include your parentheses there. And it will calculate, and it's within a penny uh, of this, but you should be very close in your interest payment. And again, that's due to the periodic rate um, and the number of uh, significant digits that the computation is being made. But you can see where your total number of interest payment uh, should match or be, be very, very close uh, to your final cumulative interest calculation over here um, and it shows again how much interest how much principal and what your remaining balance is and for any for any of us that have, have ever had you know a car payment um, where you get through and you do that last payment or what you think is the last payment that final payment um, and then the bank contacts you and says hey by the way you still owe 12 cents or however much it is based off of uh, when that final payment was received, uh, this kind of explains uh, that little bit left over balance there in terms of in terms of that. But again, it has to do with the the significance of the digits and the cal calculation of the interest. Um, so here is is essentially uh, how to create an amortization table based off of the calculations. Again, we're looking at the the amount of interest, um, principal being paid at each payment period. Uh, and then computing that cumulative interest. Uh, so this should go ahead and, and help you with, with working on um, the on-hand exercise three for this week's um, homework assignment. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to me at ryan3 at ppcc.edu.